Disney Plus is in trouble. They've begun losing millions of subscribers and scrubbing dozens of shows and movies to cut costs. The company's stocks have steadily declined for some time, and the true nature of the streaming industry is beginning to reveal itself, going from a blue ocean of easy money and accessibility to a bloodbath. Companies are battling for licensing and customers, and everyone is losing. Disney Plus is not the cash cow Disney thought it was, but how did this happen and when? What was the catalyst of this downfall, or was the industry doomed from the start? For the past decade, streaming has appeared as an unbeatable deal. Compared to cable television, platforms like Disney Plus offer lower prices, tailored recommendations, and the ability to choose what you watch and when, which early on seemed revolutionary. The ability to skip the bureaucracy, time, and cost of getting a cable installation felt like a big middle finger to the greedy cable giants who had been hiking up prices and swimming in profits. It felt like a win for the consumers. But how? How could one company seemingly topple a multi-billion dollar industry? Well, the first breakout service, Netflix, beat out the competition not with resources, but with innovation, specifically disruptive innovation. Exploiting rising trends in technology, offering more convenience, and undercutting cable with lower prices. This caused customers to swarm to this new service from the old business model. Everything seemed to be going perfect for Netflix, with new players like HBO, Paramount, and Disney soon jumping in to ride the wave as well. The streaming industry appeared to be on an unstoppable rise, but things are not so glamorous behind the closed doors. You see, while streaming is far cheaper than cable, it's also far less profitable. Undercutting cable with low subscription fees, while extremely effective at gaining new subscribers, has a major downside. Streaming is nowhere near as profitable as cable. The absence of ads and lower fees means that streaming generates one-sixth as much per household compared to TV. Alluring to consumers, sure, but Netflix and other streaming services are still struggling compared to cable companies. So, if it's not great financially, why is this business model so prevalent? Well, companies like Netflix, HBO, and Disney have been playing the long game. Gone are the days of quick turnarounds in business, and many companies in the technology space will endure many years of consistent losses for long-term gain. Profitability isn't the first priority anymore, growth is. Gaining lucrative revenue, market share, and customers, and forcing other players out of the industry. The strategy worked for the lucrative phase that was the 2010s, but with an industry now saturated with competition and with customers fragmented, the game has changed. The lack of profits and soaring costs are starting to tank Disney's stock prices, which have been on a dramatic decline for a while. And they're not alone. With a global recession and a business model that's already in trouble, investors are starting to question this growth strategy and are putting on pressure to see a return. Soaring revenue doesn't pay good dividends if it's all for a loss, and executives can only convince shareholders to drop their money into a bottomless pit for so long. Streaming services are starting to implement big changes. They're looking to cut costs and gain extra revenue wherever they can, and this is certainly the case for Disney+. Plus. The idea of a Disney streaming service seems like a money printer. Even as a latecomer to this digital rat race, Disney Plus seems like they've been a dominant force, rapidly amassing millions of users and significant market share, thanks to Disney's iconic IPs and their strategy of acquisition. Yet, even a behemoth like Disney is still facing huge challenges in the streaming space, even with a wide quantity of brands like Star Wars, Marvel, Fox, Pixar, and many more. The company has been pouring substantial capital into producing endless shows surrounding these properties to avoid losing subscribers, yet they're still in trouble. Disney is no longer enjoying its lucrative growth, with the service shedding millions of subscribers, and the money sink isn't paying off. The age of streaming loyalty is over, and these projects are no longer alluring enough to retain customers, because the whole industry has changed. The influx of such a wide breadth of competitors and fragmented services has caused consumer habits to change altogether. A staggering 36% of customers are described as service hoppers, switching and resubscribing to a variety of services over the span of 12 months. Depending on the availability of new movies and shows, Disney has been attempting to catch customers who have no intention of staying put, pouring millions into projects to attract consumers who will only stay for a few months at a time. 
immense costs for little return. Disney may have thought this market was an easy source of revenue, but it's clear the company overestimated the value of their old catalog of movies and properties, as they're not attractive enough to produce long-term profits in such a fragmented market. Investors have realized that Disney Plus is not the golden hen they thought it was, and something needs to change now. They are starting to squeeze out additional profits where they can with the ambitious goal of becoming profitable by 2024, which might not even be possible. The war for profitability and survival is causing some overhauls to streaming services as shareholders pile on the pressure. But what does this mean for Disney Plus? Will they be able to adapt or maybe they're in too deep already? Well, we're already starting to see some of these changes emerge. There are two ways to improve the profitability of a business, increase revenue and cut costs. And Disney is taking drastic action in both areas. The company is cutting costs left and right and just scrapped over 40 series and films from Disney Plus, some of which being large, expensive and quite recent projects like the one and only Ivan featuring Brian Cranston. Removing content from a streaming service seems like a baffling idea, but all of it brings about a cost that Disney has wrestled with from the start. Licensing. Cutting dozens of shows and movies is worth the outrage because it keeps investors happy and improves the bottom line. Disney is expected to cut a staggering $3 billion in content costs as they remove properties that bring about licensing costs but don't improve customer loyalty. The company is moving away from a broader catalog and starting to redirect its focus towards the core brand and is also planning to spread out new shows to reduce costs and prevent overlap. Disney CEO Bob Iger also announced that over 7,000 jobs are to be made redundant in the near future. All of this in a desperate attempt to make its streaming service profitable by next year. An ambitious goal and an uphill battle. But cutting costs is only half of that battle, as Disney is also changing the platform to allow for new revenue streams. And this might be the biggest change of all. In an ironic turn of events, streaming services like Disney Plus are looking back at the cable business model and are offering services with advertising. The services that made cable advertising seem like a practice of the ancient past have now realized that they are a necessity for profitability. Disney has recently introduced an additional subscription option for this service, Disney Plus Basic, at $7.99 a month with advertising, while sneakily raising the price of their now premium option to $10.99 a month. The streaming service is also offering a variety of bundles, including the trio of Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus for $12.99, all featuring advertising. The company is offering far more options for different consumers that probably wouldn't subscribe to their premium service, but one thing's for certain, most of the new offerings feature mandatory ads. Disney isn't alone in this either, as most companies in the industry have acknowledged advertising as a necessary evil, and services like Netflix, HBO Max, and many more now offer cheaper plans with ads. But will this be enough? Will the cut costs and new services be enough to keep Disney Plus out of the red? Or is the company simply delaying the inevitable? Over the next several years, we're going to see the biggest shift in the streaming industry since its birth. Gone are the days of endless growth where streaming seemed to print money. What seemed to be a market of easy revenue has now entered a phase of survival. A period where companies must adapt or be left behind. We're already seeing massive changes in the industry and we'll no doubt be seeing many more in the near future. Disney's methods of saving their streaming service are proving to be effective with more signups to their new ad-supported plan than any other platform. But even with this new revenue stream and more customers, the path to profitability isn't looking great for Disney. It's going to be a long and turbulent ride, and shareholders are starting to worry whether they'll ever see a return from their investment. Cash flows are sorry ghosts of their former selves. Rather than being the new sliced bread, investors and executives have accepted that streaming is in fact not a good business. But possibly Disney's biggest mistake during this entire fiasco is the self-inflicted damage to their brand. There's been a dramatic rise in content over the past decade, with an influx of new shows, movies, and remakes being announced in order to pad out the Disney Plus library. While they've recently pulled back on this practice, it's a little too late. Many consumers are burnt out on Disney content, and fans who would have been exhilarated for some of these spin-off shows at one point are now indifferent. There's an oversupply of content for these brands. A lot of these projects like the Boba Fett show or the live action Disney remakes are lacking in quality and have devalued the Disney brand as a whole. An oversupply equates to decreased demand. 
Disney has fallen for the economics trap as old as time. Whether the company can save the sinking ship is unknown, but they need to take drastic action if they want Disney Plus to survive. The entertainment industry is facing massive shifts. While companies like Disney prioritize their new streaming services, new players like Nintendo are entering the movie market with a splash. We made a video analyzing this move and how it could be the biggest change in the company's history. You can watch it right here. And don't forget to subscribe to Dollar Stories for more business documentaries.